If you've ever worked with AI voice assistants, you probably know that they are terribly bad if it comes to recognizing brand names and obviously personal names, last names, first names, whatever it is that is related to it. If you look through the call transcripts, you know that they are mostly interpreted in a wrong way. And to give you an example, I have right here on my screen an Bappy assistant that is very basic and it uses a name as seen here called Ease Limon, which is a company name that I came up with. And I came up specifically with this company name because like many others that are out there, it is very hard to understand, especially on a phone. So you can see here here, for example, your company called East Living, and the name is Mary. And just to show you how funny it actually is and how many times it gets interpreted wrongly, I'm going to open a transcript from a call that I had a couple of minutes before I was recording this video. So you can see here that the assistant even says, Hey, Mar I'm Mary from East from East Levin. <laughs> then I'm saying, I'm good. When was East Levin founded? At least they got the name right. But this S11 is completely wrongly written. Then here again, it says S11. Down here, you can even say it says again S11 and it says Murray instead of Mary. It is a massive mess. So this often causes issues inside of our company when we build voice assistants for clients. And to give you a more precise example, we have a couple of clients where we are supposed to ask the user that is currently calling if that user purchased the product from that company XXX, whatever that name is, right? So if the company says, yeah, I bought the product from Ease 11 and it misinterprets it here, the AI often says, oh yeah, sorry, I, you didn't purchase the project, uh, uh, the product at our place, you purchased the product at S11, whatever it is that can come, comes up with, right? This is incredibly bad. And today I'm going to show you a quick fix for that, how you can make sure to fix the problem directly inside of WAPI, not by leveraging WAPI itself, but by another tool that is implemented within WAPI and offers a feature to provide support with it. So stay tuned. What we are going to talk about is considered a feature from DeepGram, which is the text-to-speech and the speech-to-text transcriber inside of the WAPI assistant. You can get access to that by going to the assistant that you actually want to fix and you head over to Transcriber, you can see DeepCrim is implemented as a service to do all of this TTS and STT. By default, this is the one that is always selected and honestly, I prefer it as well because it has so many different features, including one that fixes our problem to make sure we often or mostly have the right company names and the right names, whatever it is that we try to refer to. Now, the feature I'm going to talk about is called keyword boosting or keyword suppressing if you take the negative side of it. And it is a feature that DeepGram as a platform or service provider provides by itself. And there are a good and a bad side to it. And let me just start with the bad side. The bad side is that visually there is no implementation. So right by looking here on the screen, you can see there are only three fields for adjusting the DeepGram transcriber. And while this is very minimalistic and good, it doesn't help with specific cases of recognizing certain keywords. However, thanks to WAPI's API, we do have access of adding something like that to it. And I'm going to show you how this looks first of all, in the documentation. So to do that, what we do is we head over to docs.wapi.ai and in here we scroll down to customization and in customization, they have a point called custom keywords. When we click on that, you can see it talks about keyword boosting and it tells you a little bit more of how it works. It's a bit more technical and a bit harder to read. So honestly, this is not the favorite documentation I refer to. I'm also going to share with you the DeepGram documentation, which looks like this, which is a lot more explanatory and it gives you a lot of more details on how that actually works and what it does, etc. So you will learn more from the DeepGram documentation than the WAPI one. However, WAPI has an integration, which is exactly what we need. And that's all I'm basically guiding you through. So to give you a better explanation first theoretically what this keyword boosting actually means is that DeepCrem has a built-in feature that allows you to give a certain value to a certain keyword and and then DeepCrem basically tries to match alternatives based on that value that seem to mean or be the same keyword that you're liking to target with that value that you just said. So when we look down here in the documentation, you can see here, for example, Snufflopagus. I think it, it's some some kind of a, some kind of persona from a, a child's TV show or something. And let's just let's just say this is the keyword, okay? And we give it a value of one, meaning that this is a little bit higher rated than a normal keyword that you would have inside of a transcript. And by defining it here and giving it one, the chances of Snufflopagus are being matched with that same word is higher than if it wouldn't. So to show you that in a better example, we're gonna head over to the DeepGram doc documentation. And by scrolling down here, you can see as well by boosting a keyword, giving it a value of five, it is even interpreted if it's not the full word. So this is the truth, right? Because we have the whole keyword in. So if someone says this inside of a phone call, this will be properly interpreted. But now if someone, for example, says only snuff, it would not be interpreted. 
or, or a sniff, but after it would be boosted with a keyword basically assigning a value to it, it would still even interpret sniff as uh, Snuffleupagus and basically translating it properly in the transcript. Because what you have to imagine and understand is that, so based on the orchestration layer, so basically how Vapi works and combines all of those tools together, DeepGram itself basically translates that stuff to text, which is then fed to the LLM, right? So even though the LLM gets the content and you have to find a prompt that the LLM uses as well, the stuff that you speak has to be converted to text. So it is not interpreted the same way as the rest of your content. So output always differs. And this is also why when you go to transcript, like the one I showed you earlier, that it has different inputs because all of that stuff is basically translated from voice to text and vice versa. So this is something very important to keep in mind because that is why we see a lot of hallucination if it comes to recognizing keywords. And now with all of that out of the way, I think we are already at a level where you should understand that we can boost a keyword. And by the way, this is another one. I'm just gonna quickly go over it because it's not that important in most cases, which is suppressing a keyword. So by assigning a negative value, you can remove a word from a certain sentence. And this sentence is basically generated right in the moment when you speak. So here's truth, for example, you can see Kansas is set to minus 10. This one mentions Wichita, Kansas. Before suppression, it says the exact same thing. After compression, you see Kansas is missing, which means you kind of suppress this keyword. You can use that to cut out certain things that you don't want to have inside of a transcript. It is very rarely the case that we use that, but there are some negative words that we often cut out in case someone gets mad or whatever. So we had quite a bit of things that we removed in some of the cases but mostly it is not necessary. So now with the theory out of the way, how can we actually implement that in the assistant? And especially since Vapi has no predefined interface for that, we need to find a workaround. And the workaround is usually something like updating the assistant via the API or using a transient assistant in the first place. And if you have not heard of transient assistants, there are tons of videos on my channel that explain what a transient assistant is so you can get a better understanding of it and leverage that for your company. But for the sake of this example and the simplicity and actually showing you how it works, I'm going to use just the API to update the assistant so that we can make it work. Now, in my example, when we go back to the model here, you can see that our first message says, message says I'm Mary. So the name of my assistant is Mary and the company name is Ease Living. And now what I would like to do is I would like to ensure that in the transcript, we have a higher possibility of people that actually say Ease Living or Mary to actually have inside of the transcript is living or marry. How can we achieve that? Very simple, what we, what we do is we basically first have to start an API call so that we can update information because what we do now is we update the transcriber via the API because it's not directly integrated. So when heading to the custom keywords in Wapi, you can see as well that in a request, we basically here have a, an assistant definition. You can see that inside of the transcriber, which is the DeepGram transcriber, we have a keyword section where we can define a keyword with a value. Now, the good thing is the API reference of Wapi allows you to directly do requests so we can directly test it right within here. So once we have opened the documentation, all we will do is we would go to update assistant and you would first obviously go to the authorization. You would add in your API key, your API key, you can find by the way down here, going on your name, you're going to API keys. Then under API keys, you create a new private API key. You copy that one and you basically paste that one inside of the authorization section. I'm not gonna open it cause I have mine already in there, but just so you know. Now we also need to define the ID of the assistant, which we can add by clicking here, which is kind of like what, has, what we have in the path. So to get that one, what we do is we head over to Mary, which is the assistant we currently added. We're gonna click here on copy assistant ID. We're gonna head back to the documentation. I paste it here in the ID field and that should already do the trick for the authentication. So now we can basically already access the assistant. All we need to do now is actually define what we would like to update. So we basically do that by clicking here on the body and in the body, you can see even as the first section, the transcriber, which is exactly what we need. So I'm simply selecting DeepGram, I'm selecting Nova2, which I think is the same one that I have in here as well. Exactly Nova2. We're gonna set it to English as well, as a language, which is here. Smart format I set to true. And for the keywords, this is now the important part. We want to define the keywords that we would like to see in the transcript based on the information that comes in from within us talking to the AI and from the AI talking back. If we head back to our model right here, I'm just gonna copy ease living. This is the first keyword I would basically like to validate and make sure we get it right as many times as possible. I'm gonna click on adding a new keyword. I add the keyword here and I'm also going to add another keyword, which is Mary, cause I also know that Mary, as we have seen inside of my transcript from earlier, it's written Murray. We have the weirdest writings. So this is often wrong as well. And I'm going to add this one here as well. Now what we need to do is we need to define a value of how important this one is for us. 
Now for company names, I've tried anything between 20 and 50 and both on all of those values are usually a good range. I would not go lower than that. It often causes issues, but obviously it also depends on how complex your brand name is. In my case, for testing, I'm just gonna set it to 30. And for Mary, I'm gonna set it to 20 because Mary might not always be only Mary itself, but imagine you have actually a Murray that is calling through your phone agent and he basically says, yeah, I'm Murray, and then it's still translated to Murray, which might happen. So just keep that in mind that what the AI says is not always the exact word that you would like to have translated, but it might also like falsify your value. This is why you need to be very careful if you set these values higher. Like ease living is pretty complex and the word itself is, you know, written in a way that, okay, I, I can like neglect the fact that other words might be also changed to ease living. At least you can get the meaning out of it. But I would like to see ease living, so I'm gonna set it to 30 but you can play around with it by yourself. Now, once we've added that, all we need to do is we need to scroll up and we need to click on send. And if everything works out well, we should see a response here with the organization ID, etc., and basically the updated assistant. So when it says 200, okay, we know the assistant has been updated and now it's time to actually test that assistant. So if I head back here, you will not see any kind of difference here because obviously this feature of the keyword of the keyword boosting is not available inside of the visual interface, but only via the API. So all we can do now is literally just test it and I'm going to show you the new call transcript that we are going to create right now. Hey, I'm Mary from Eslevin. How are you today? Hey Mary, I'm good. Can you tell me a little bit more about Eslevin? Of course, Eslevin is all about making the process of finding and securing your ideal home as smooth and enjoyable as possible. That is awesome. Thank you a lot, Mary. Can you tell me when Eslevin was founded? Absolutely. Eslevin was founded in 2015 with the mission to simplify the real estate process and create a more... All right, I think this should be enough for a an example. So what we can do now is we're gonna head over to the logs and I'm gonna show you the actual log. Now, once this log loaded, you will see on the right that we should have now a higher chance of actually getting the words that we want. And you can see that as Levin is written the right way now here, I say, hey, Mary, Mary is written wrong, correct too. As Levin is correct too. You can see there's still an S before, but it at least interpreted Levin as the right word. So we have a bit of a higher chance of getting the right thing out of it. Here you can see as well, Mary, and here it is properly interpreted as, as living. And here again, the same thing. So you can see that just by adjusting the keyword value, so the value of how much value the deep gram itself gives to the keyword during transcribing it, we can manipulate the outcome and make sure we get a higher success rate on certain words. Now, this is not only for company names, but this is also incredibly important for products, for example, for, for membership plans, for, what, for whatever it is that you use inside of your prompt and you need to make sure you have a higher accuracy. So this is a very neat trick on how you can manage to make it work. And if you now think, yeah, Jan as well, this is awesome, but if I have an assistant and I can not even visually update it and now I'm gonna change something, it's gonna get overwritten. This is true, but if you have used any of my previous templates or you're actually using a transient based assistant in the first place, you don't need to worry about that because you have the JSON outside of the platform anyway and you can just manipulate it inside of the JSON that you've created somewhere else. This is just like a very basic explanation. By the way, in case you're using squats, you can also define the keywords on different levels inside of the squats. So if a squad has access to a membership plan, the other one to a different product, you can set the keywords based on those products, which is incredibly interesting. And now if you're a power user of WAPI and you would like to leverage this feature more, there is a limit of 100 variables or 100 keywords that you can use inside of the keyword boost or the keyword suppression. Just keep that in mind if you create keywords. It is usually sufficient for most of the use cases, especially for building those kind of voice assistants. So you will probably never reach those kind of boundaries, but otherwise you might have to look into custom models. And that's all I got for now. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you got some value out of it. And if you would like to see more of that kind of content, feel free to drop me a message below in the comments as well of future videos you would like to see. Thanks for watching and see you next time.